heard that expression, right? If you build a better mousetrap, they'll beat a path to your door. Means I could get rich. Trouble is, improving things can be difficult. Is there an easier way? Well, yes. There's crony capitalism. I could make friends with important people, the people who set the rules. I could hire lobbyists to win them over. People get rich that way, too. Serious materials just reopened a manufacturing plant outside of Pittsburgh. One little company gets the attention of powerful people. This is the story of Republic Windows and Serious Material. Might government handouts and a cozy relationship between this company and the administration have something to do with their success? Economic stimulus! Ta-da! Plus, new government rules make things tough for small businesses that sell kids' toys. This is not the law we need. I'd have to mark this up a thousand percent. We'll be out of business. But the big toy companies don't object. Come get out of our big heart. And Big Tobacco supported tobacco regulation. And Big Pharma supports Obamacare. Big banks get bailouts. Could it be that Michael Moore got this one right? This economic system they call capitalism has no moral or ethical core to it. Is capitalism to blame? No, it's not capitalism. It is crony capitalism. And now, the man who shatters conventional wisdom, John Stossel. Good evening. When he says crony capitalism, what's he talking about? Well, suppose you're in the window business. How do you get a leg up on the competition? Sure would help if government gave you a special tax credit and gave your customers stimulus money to buy your products. It would help even more if somehow you could get the president and the vice president of the United States to say nice things about your company. But come on, that's not possible, is it? No company could be that fortunate. There are three big companies in the window business. Pella, Anderson, and Marvin. Marvin windows and doors fit your vision. The recession's been tough on these companies. But then there's also a much smaller company, Sirius Materials. Sirius is booming, according to this article in Fortune. On a roll, according to Inc. magazine, which puts Sirius' CEO on its cover with a story titled, How to Build a Great Company. How did he do it? Well, he had some help from high places. Thank you, Mr. Vice President, uh, for your unwavering support. That's Vice, Vice President, President Biden he's thanking. Jobs. Without you and the Recovery Act, this would not have been possible. Biden returned the compliments. You're not just churning out windows. You're making some of the most energy efficient windows in the world. I would argue the most energy efficient windows in the world. Other window makers say, no, our windows are just as energy efficient. But the vice president hasn't visited their companies or even mentioned their names. And why am I talking about the vice president? I'm here today representing Serious Materials. How many company officials get to make introductions like this? It is my distinct honor to introduce the president of the United States, President Barack Obama. The president gave a speech on energy policy that cited, guess which company? Serious Materials just reopened, as he mentioned, a manufacturing plant outside of Pittsburgh. And these workers will now have a new mission, producing some of the most energy efficient windows in the world. Wow, what a dream endorsement. And just last week, the president announced a new set of tax credits for so-called green companies. The only window company on the list? Serious Materials. This is a story of how a new economy predicated on innovation and efficiency is not only helping us today, but in inspiring a better tomorrow. Actually, I think it's a story about crony capitalism. It's almost as if the government and serious materials are partners. The company VP of Policy testified in Congress. Thank you for the opportunity to appear here today and share serious materials experience in creating green jobs. And here he is in this picture with so-called energy leaders at the U.S. Department of Energy. And who's the woman in the middle? Kathy Zoy, who oversees the government's weatherization program. She has big plans for your tax money, as she explained at a conference. Where literally SWAT teams go into neighborhoods and they retrofit every single house and every single business on Main Street. Oh, and I left out a little fact. Kathy Zoy is the wife of the vice president of policy of Sirius Windows. 
So of all the window companies in America, maybe it's a coincidence that the one that gets presidential and vice presidential attention and a special tax credit is one where company executives give thousands of dollars to the Obama campaign and where the policy director spends nights at home with the energy department's weatherization boss. It could be coincidence. And there's apparently nothing illegal about this. In Kathy Zoy's ethics agreement, she did disclose her marriage and says she would recuse herself from any matter that had a predictable effect on her financial interests. But it sure looks funny to me. And it's odd that even the liberal media has so much interest in this one company. Vice President Biden says the stimulus bill's funding for making buildings more energy efficient is expected to drive up demand for the kinds of windows made by serious materials, which has caused the company to ramp up its production. That's how it works. Economic stimulus. Ta-da! Ta-da is right. That is how it works. But government handouts that go to one favored company, why is that right? We asked the White House, the Department of Energy, and Serious Materials to provide someone to talk about this, but they all declined. A Serious Materials spokeswoman said, we don't comment on the personal lives of our employees. Just today, however, she called to say our story is full of lies, but she wouldn't say what those lies are. So with me now are Jonathan Blake and Annette Meeks of the Freedom Foundation of Minnesota. They brought me this story. so. Annette, how did you find out about it? Well, we track local government spending. We're just a small state-based think tank in Minneapolis, so we tend to look at what's happening in our state. And when the uh, Recovery Act was passed last year by Congress, we took particular interest in that. And we just happened to notice that there was an awful lot of attention being paid to one window manufacturer uh, when we had several large window manufacturers in our state yeah, that you, were linked. You happened to talk to executives from the, the larger window companies, and they said... They weren't doing so well. <laughs> Things were really tough. Some of the toughest times, some of these countries are, companies are 100 years old. And then you heard about this little company that was doing well? Well, but... they just kept appearing over and over again in uh, White House press conferences and White House news conferences. Both the president and vice president went and visited their company. So we thought it was worthwhile to take a look at this company and why they were benefiting so much from stimulus funds for green energy when Minnesota companies and other large manufacturers weren't. So Jonathan works for you and you said go do that? Have at it. What did you do? Uh, you know I started uh, looking into the stimulus funding, uh, looked uh, first at the energy efficiency provisions, found that Kathy Zoy um, is head of energy efficiency and renewable energy, controls 16.8 billion dollars worth of stimulus funds. Thought that was probably worth looking into especially with uh, regards to the uh, window industry. Yeah how much? 16.8 billion dollars. And that's just in stimulus funds. And that's just the government we've gotten used to, that a couple individuals are in charge of billions of your tax dollars. Absolutely. All right, so the government believes in weatherization. What's wrong with that? Uh, maybe nothing. Um, and our, our issue here isn't, uh, isn't a policy issue. Um, but when there is a serious conflict of interest, or at least an apparent conflict of interest, uh, and $16.8 billion worth of taxpayer money uh, is on the line, uh, we think that uh, this becomes more than just a policy discussion. And y you had some thoughts when she said she recused herself. She may very well have uh, recused herself. The only two examples that were provided by the Department of Energy were that she did not participate in a loan guarantee program for Windows. Well, that doesn't even fall under her Office of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy. Uh, and that she didn't meet with the Window and Door uh, Manufacturers Association. Uh, those are two pretty trivial issues, especially when we're talking about $16.8 billion of, of stimulus funds, and neither of those issues are related to that. So their response was, well, don't worry, she's recused herself from areas that you're not asking about, essentially. And it's not that just this company does the weatherization, right? Anderson, Marvin, they do it too. Pella. I mean, there's, there's a lot of companies that do this, and that's the interesting thing is, when you, you're dealing with billions of taxpayer dollars and, and you're picking winners and losers, we understand that government does this. We might not like it, but government routinely does this. We at least deserve the transparency of how did it happen that in a list of all of these tax credits released last week, only one was given to a window manufacturer. How did they happen to win that sweepstakes? How does it come about that repeatedly, uh, at least six times last year, executives from one window manufacturer, one small California company, appears with the president and the vice president, and no other company even gets a mention. 
Well, I thank you for bringing us the story. I invite uh, all of you to bring me stories that uh, are this interesting, and y you do good work. One other example was that you found out in your state the state-run liquor stores, which have a monopoly on selling liquor, still manage to lose money? It's an interesting thing. We have municipal liquor stores in Minnesota, and they also are the same ones who dole out the liquor licenses. And it's pretty amazing when you have the only liquor store in town, and you keep out all private industry, and you still lose money. And we thought people needed to know about that. That's government work for you, and government keeps getting bigger. So coming up, visions of crony capitalism, not just in the window business, but in all kinds of businesses.